Hey, how's it going? My name is Josh Burns and welcome to Josh Burns Tech. In this video, I'm going to show you how to start freelancing on Upwork. Specifically, you're going to learn about hourly contracts, fixed price contracts, and the brand new project catalog, how to find jobs on Upwork, Upwork communication, both pre-contract and contract, getting paid, which we all love, Upwork fees and connects, and the process of closing your job at the very end and getting that great review. This is an Upwork tutorial for beginners, which definitely would have made things way easier for me when I first started freelancing on Upwork back around May of 2016. This video is not sponsored by Upwork and none of my freelance videos ever have been. Trust me, I definitely wish they were. I'm simply sharing my success with you to help you succeed as a freelancer. This channel has helped freelancers all around the world to make life-changing money and have complete job flexibility. If the past year has shown us anything, it's that we cannot be dependent on a single employer or a single source of income. Freelancing diversifies your income across different employers, and it comes with increased earning potential as well. I've personally earned over $600,000 freelancing on Upwork since 2016. I likely would have never reached the income level that I'm at now solely working for one company on salary. My income has increased significantly every year since I started freelancing, and my goal is to help you do the same. I'm from a rural area in central Kentucky. I'm the first person in my family to graduate from college and work in the tech industry. I'm literally proof that anyone can be a high earning successful freelancer with consistent hard work, resilience, patience, and focused effort. If you get value from this video and you enjoy my freelance content, all I ask is to just take one second to hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. We truly have the best freelance community on all of YouTube. I really believe that. Let's keep growing it together. And if you want to learn directly from me, I have a Patreon where I mentor freelancers and I teach them freelance skills as well. The bottom tier is just $2 a month and that will give you access to exclusive freelancing posts and access to a new freelance Discord server as well. If that's something you're interested in, then check out the link in the description below or go to patreon.com forward slash Josh Burns Tech. The very first thing that you need to start freelancing is a skill set that has demand. Before you create an account on Upwork or do anything that I'm going to show you in this video, your skill set comes first. Your skill set is the number one prerequisite for becoming a successful freelancer. You have to put in the work, the time, the dedication, and the consistency to learn a freelance skill that has demand and high earning potential on Upwork. No one is going to do it for you. You have to develop the internal mindset that you're actually going to start learning and start taking action and stop convincing yourself, you know what, I'll just wait till tomorrow. Today isn't a good day for me. I can always do it tomorrow. So whenever I want to learn a new skill or enhance my existing skill set, I prefer to do that completely on my own. Rather than being in group in person training, I simply learn better on my own. That's why I'm excited to tell you about our sponsor for this video, which I personally use to learn new freelance skills and enhance my existing skill set. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Examples of topics include freelancing and entrepreneurship, marketing, graphic design, web development, and many others. Skillshare is great for lifelong learners, which again is something that I believe every freelancer really needs to strive to be. Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth, as well as offers creative classes that are designed for real life and all the circumstances that come with it. It's also super affordable as well, at less than $10 a month for an annual subscription. Skillshare is designed specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. One of my favorite classes is Tony Staunton's Python 3, a beginner's guide to Python programming on Skillshare. It's easily the most popular Python course on Skillshare with over 18,000 students and really great reviews. I learn the best by practicing consistently and this course has great practice programs. And best of all, this course does not require any previous programming experience. Because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 1,000 people who click the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So if you're one of the first 1,000 people to join, then the free trial will give you unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes like Tony Staunton's Python 3, a beginner's guide to Python programming. Thank you so much Skillshare for supporting the channel and sponsoring this video. All right, let's first cover contract types on Upwork. There are two types of projects on Upwork, which are hourly and fixed price projects. Upwork recently added the project catalog as well, which is a completely just brand new way of using Upwork with pre-scoped projects. The project catalog is something that I expected Upwork to create. There are certain skill sets that benefit very well 
from taking services and packaging them together and selling them like products. So let's dive into both contract types and the project catalog. I'm going to cover all three of them so you fully understand how they work. On Upwork for hourly contracts, you include your hourly rate when you submit a job proposal. For fixed price contracts, freelancers submit their proposed bid for the entire project and suggest potential milestones. During the introduction or interview process, which I'm going to discuss later in this video, you can also negotiate that fixed price and the prices of the different milestones. Okay, let's say you get your first job on Upwork and you win your first hourly contract. And that's such a great feeling. I remember back in 2016 when I got my first job on Upwork, it was amazing. So you got your first job, you've already communicated with the client, you're ready to start working. On hourly contracts, you need to use the Upwork desktop app. The Upwork desktop app is basically a way for you to log your hours, which the client can also see as well. As you can see right here, Clients can monitor freelancers' progress by checking the work diary. Okay, bear with me. I know that some of this stuff is hard to look at in text. It doesn't give you a visual representation. I'm actually going to show you what these things look like, so just bear with me. Okay, this is the web page where you can actually download the desktop app. All you need to do is select a download version. In my case, that would be Windows 64-bit standard, and then click download. When your download finishes, Run the executable and install the Upwork desktop app. And this is what it will look like. So you have to have an account on Upwork already because you need to sign into it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and sign into it. And here's what it looks like when you're signed in, minus the blurring. I blurred out my client names because I don't want to share that information. Okay, let's say this top row is a job that I want to work on. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And now to start tracking time, all I have to do is click this on off button. And now it's tracking time. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this because I don't want to be tracking time for this YouTube video. This actually leads to something really important. As you can see right here, this is a screenshot of my desktop. The Upwork desktop app will basically take a screenshot every 10 minutes capturing whatever you're working on and then upload it to the work diary. And as you can see here, I've logged an hour and 20 minutes out of my 40 hour weekly limit. So on this contract, I can work up to 40 hours a week. Do I work 40 hours a week for this client? Absolutely not. I work whatever's assigned to me. However, the limit is set to 40 hours, so that's what I can work up to if needed. You can also add manual time. If the client has manual time enabled, then anytime you're away from your computer, you can't use the desktop app then you can manually add your time this way. Let's say I worked from 9.30 until 10. So you can select 10 minute increments. And again, this ties into how the Upwork desktop app works. Remember when I said that it takes a screenshot every 10 minutes and uploads it to the work diary. That's how it tracks time. It's in 10 minute increments. And here I can type in whatever I worked on. And I'll just type in something generic here. So on January 18th from 9.30 a.m. until 10 a.m., I resolved a database issue for this client. I didn't have the Upwork desktop app installed, so I couldn't track my time. I'm going to go ahead and manually add it this way. I'm not actually going to add this because I didn't resolve a database issue yesterday, but you get the point. Let's take a look at some settings in the Upwork desktop app that are really great to know. I'm going to click on this gear icon and then click settings. Okay, so this first part, really important. If you have more than one monitor, like I do, then you can actually change how it captures screenshots. You can set it to capture on your active monitor, or you can set it to capture all monitors. You can have it send you a desktop notification when it takes a screenshot, which I definitely recommend. And you can have it play a sound as well when it takes a screenshot. You can upload a custom sound or use a default one, which is what I use. And here's what it sounds like. You can update your time zone. The default is UTC. You can set up your camera as well and even have it take camera shots of you with your screenshots while you're working. This is something that I don't have enabled, but you know, feel free if you want to enable it. There's two reminders that you can enable as well. The first one is to change a memo and the other one is to notify you when time tracking is off. The messages tab is probably the best one to know about. And this is what I love right here. Out of office responder. 
you can see that I had mine set for right after Christmas. And what you can do is actually go to edit. So if you're out of office, on vacation, on holiday, whatever it may be, and one of your clients messages you, then you can use out of office responder to automatically send them a message letting them know that you're unavailable. For emails, this is basically the exact same thing that you would set up for emails in Gmail, Outlook, or whatever mail client that you use. If you want to automatically notify your client that you're out of office if they send you an Upwork message, this is how you do it. Here you can see that I had one set from December 26th to December 27th, so if one of my clients messaged me within this time frame, it would automatically send them this message. And here's some additional notifications that you can have set as well. Here's some keyboard shortcuts that you can use. And here's some advanced settings that you can play around with as well. If you ever have any issues with the desktop client, clearing the cache and restarting will definitely help. That pretty much covers everything you need to know about the desktop app. Okay, so I told you I was going to show you the Upwork diary. You can actually navigate to this when you're signed into Upwork, but we're going to go ahead and click on it here. And here's the Upwork work diary. This is something very, very, very important that you need to know about. For this specific contract, I worked an hour and 10 minutes on the 19th. These are all the 10 minute increment screenshots that it took of my desktop while I was working. You can see that I included a brief description of what I was working on. This is definitely something good that you should be doing. To add your description, all you have to do is manually select each one of these and then go up to edit memo. And right here you can add a description. And here's something very important. You see these little green boxes? This grades your activity within the 10 minutes. So if I click on this, at 3.50 a.m. it says that my activity level was 7 out of 10 minutes. Again, all these times are in UTC. I definitely was not working at 3.50 a.m. But anyway, from 3.50 a.m. UTC until 4 a.m., my activity level was 7 out of 10 minutes, basically saying that I was pretty active while I was working those 10 minutes. This works great for some skill sets and others, not so much. There's some times when you know you actually have to think about what you're doing, think of a way to resolve an issue, how to implement something. You may not be typing or moving your mouse around the entire 10 minutes. If you're not active with your mouse and keyboard, it's going to show up and make the client think that you may have not been working during those 10 minutes. But depending on your skill set, they should know if you're going to be using your mouse and keyboard a lot within the 10 minute increments. So what if you forgot to turn off the time tracker and it took some screenshots of non-work items? You can edit your work diary and delete any of the 10 minute increments. So let's say right here at 4.20 a.m. I really wanted to delete this screenshot and now it's going to ask you if you really want to delete it. I'm not going to delete it because I was actually working here, but for instance if you need to delete any of the 10 minute increments, this is how you do it. And once you delete it, it will be reflected in your overall hours work for the day as well. The key takeaway from hourly contracts on Upwork and the Upwork desktop app is to make sure that you're actually working on their job when you're tracking time. If you're not, they can easily find out by looking at the work diary. And here's what an hourly job looks like. I can click on this hourly job and it's going to give me a lot of information. They're not sure how many hours it's going to be per month. It says hours to be determined. The project is expected to be less than a month. And here you can see what their hourly range is that they're looking for as well. This client is looking for a freelancer in the $35 an hour to $63 an hour range. My hourly rate is currently $125 an hour, so this isn't a job that I would submit a proposal on. You can use advanced search and apply filters to find whatever type of job you're looking for. I'm going to show you that in the next section. For fixed price projects, you and the client can agree to certain project milestones that will need to be completed and you can get paid on those as well. You don't actually have to use milestones. You could have one fixed price for let's say $1,000 and whenever you finished the project and submitted your work, you could get paid for the $1,000. However, if the client has a large project, then you can create milestones and get paid at each one when it's complete. So hourly contracts are covered under Upwork hourly protection. Fixed price projects are covered under Upwork fixed price protection. There's definitely not as much protection for fixed price contracts. Regarding hourly contracts, you will invoice your time by logging it with the desktop app which I just showed you. As long as your hours meet hourly protection criteria, 
you will get paid for the invoice. Let's say you accept a $1,000 fixed price project. The client actually has to put that $1,000 in escrow before you start working. Whenever you submit your work, which is actually a setting in your fixed price contract, you can submit your work for approval by the client. They have 14 days from submission to either request changes or approve it. If the client does not approve your work or request changes within the 14 days, then the escrow funds are automatically released to you. If the client refuses to release the payment, then you can file a dispute. Hopefully this never happens to you, but if the client refuses to release a payment, then you can file a dispute. So as you can see, there's definitely not as much protection under fixed price projects compared to hourly. Hourly contracts are the main contracts that I focus on. I've never had an issue with them and I get paid every single week if I tracked any time the previous week. And here's an example of a fixed price project for $5,000. Now if I go to submit proposal and I scroll down to the term section. From here I can select milestones that I want to be paid at or I can select by project and get paid for the entire thing when I'm finished. I definitely recommend using milestones, especially if you have a larger project. If you have any personal clients off Upwork and you're doing fixed price projects, definitely request some type of percentage up front. That way you cover yourself where you get some payment before the project starts. You don't have to wait around forever to get that full amount. So again, we can add some milestones and say I wanted to add two milestones. I could type a description in. So now I have two milestones. I can change the due date. We're going to do the first one by Saturday and the next one by the following Saturday. And now I can break the amount up. The client's budget is $5,000 and that's what I'm going to try to stay within. You don't have to stay within their budget when you submit your proposal. However, if you want a great shot at getting hired, you probably need to. So again, I'm going to break the total budget up. We're going to do $2,500 here. And for the second milestone, we're going to do the rest of the budget. So instead of getting paid the full $5,000 on the 30th, I'm going to get paid $2,500 on the 23rd and $2,500 more on the 30th. And that's why I personally like milestones. You can get paid along the way rather than waiting until the entire project's finished to get paid. But I specifically focus on hourly contracts. I don't do a whole lot of fixed price contracts just because hourly fits way better with my skill set. Here's an example of a fixed price contract that I completed in the past. The total budget was $1,000 and we had $1,000 worth of milestones that I got paid for. Specifically, there were two $500 milestones. And this is both milestones that I got paid for. So instead of waiting for the entire contract to finish up so I could get paid, I got paid half of the budget halfway through. And that's why I love milestones for fixed price contracts. And here's the brand new Upwork Project Catalog. Upwork clients can come to the project catalog and search for whatever they're looking for. If they need something done that has a clear scope and an upfront price, this is where they can find it. To give you an example of this, before the Upwork project catalog existed, I used Fiverr to have badges created for my YouTube channel for memberships. This is something that could have been done through the Upwork project catalog if it would have existed then. And here's what they look like. If I click on join, there's one for my logo, a Bitcoin symbol, a Tesla, Game of Thrones, the Iron Throne, a SpaceX rocket, and Mars. But if the Upwork project catalog would have existed back then, then I could have utilized it. And you can type anything in here. So for instance, let's say video editing. I'm going to go ahead and select it. So now I can look at pre-scoped video editing. I went ahead and added one for SQL Server on my profile. I don't know if I'm really going to find anyone that way. Usually I just work on hourly contracts, but you know, we'll see how it goes. Let's see if I actually show up here. I haven't even searched for myself this way yet, so let's see if mine even shows up in the rankings. 
Okay, so here we are on the first page. And yeah, there's my project right there. I created this project catalog saying that I'll analyze the SQL Server instance, make my recommendations, and then implement them for the client, making their SQL Server run faster. There's three separate tiers in my project catalog, and it comes down to how fast the client needs it done. Depending on how fast the client needs a turnaround, and how many revisions they need or modifications, that's how the price fluctuates. Who knows if someone will actually buy something for my project catalog? I don't really know. We're going to test it out though. It's something that Upwork's putting emphasis on, so I'm going to test it. You may be asking yourself, what types of projects or contract types should I be focusing on? Where can I make the most money? The answer really depends on your skill set. You can make a ton of money on hourly contracts, on fixed price contracts, and guess what? You can make a lot of money in the project catalog as well. It really comes down to your skill set and which one or combination fits best to maximize your earnings. So I've earned over $600,000 on Upwork and I primarily focus on hourly contracts as you can see right here. All of these were hourly jobs. This is one of my friends, David. I met him a few years ago when we were in one of the Upwork marketing campaigns together. We both went out to San Francisco. We were in a photo shoot. Our photos appeared on Upwork's website and other various places. He's a really great guy and it was nice to meet him. But anyway, he's earned over $800,000 on Upwork, which is absolutely insane. And if we take a look at David's projects, you will see that most of his are fixed price. There's one for $80,000. There's one for $50,000, $20,000, $20,000, $15,000. These are all fixed price jobs. David is a product designer. Fixed price contracts work very well for him because a lot of his contracts have clear scopes. There's one clear scope and he's able to do value-based pricing based on it. Now that you understand the different types of contracts and jobs on Upwork, you now need to know how to find jobs on Upwork. This is very important for new freelancers who are building their reputation and profile, but not getting any job invites yet. If you're unfamiliar with what I'm talking about, when an Upwork client posts a job, they can invite freelancers to apply for their job. Let's say for instance, I'm looking for a video editor. Alex, don't worry, this is purely for educational purposes. After I create the job, Upwork will recommend certain freelancers to me based on my requirements. I can then browse through those freelancers, and if I like any of them, I can invite them to apply for my job. I can also manually search for freelancers, just like you search for jobs. If I find a freelancer who I want to work with, then again, I can invite them to apply for my job. I don't remember specifically how long it took for me to start getting job invites on Upwork, but I do know back in 2016, it took about three to four months before I got my first job. As a new freelancer, I honestly just didn't know what I was doing. I submitted way too many job proposals and wasted a lot of time in the process. So I'm gonna help you tremendously and show you how to find the best jobs for you. Okay, this is the find work tab when you first log into Upwork. On this tab, you can see some basic filters for searches. Over here, you can see US only, my feed, and best matches. These are my main three, database administration as a category as well. These other ones here are searches that I've just done in the past kind of randomly. Um, besides SQL Server, I actually do look at that one, but these are the main ones that I focus on. Probably Best Matches, Database Administration, and SQL Server. Best Matches is actually new, and it kind of matches you based on your skill set and jobs you completed, things like that. It's really new. That's why you see this blue circle here. Anytime you see this blue circle on Upwork, it means that it's a new feature, essentially. So you can see it here. There's one up here as well. This is under direct contracts, definitely another new feature. So anytime you see the blue circle, just think new feature. So anyway, I'm gonna click on best matches, but yeah, I really like this. All the jobs that have been appearing for me, well, most of them at least, are jobs that I do on Upwork. They're really related to my skill set and the different skills that I have listed. You can see a lot of these involve SQL Server these are jobs that I would personally look at if I was looking for jobs to start bidding on. I definitely recommend checking out Best Matches. I really like it a lot. It's showing a lot of great jobs for my skill set here. 
I would definitely recommend that you check it out as well. You're probably going to find a lot of things that relate directly to your skill set. It's a great thing that Upwork's added in recently. Definitely check it out. Okay, now we're going to do some advanced searching. I'm going to search for SQL Server. So this is one way that I definitely recommend doing searches on Upwork because we can add a lot of filters here. Whatever you type in here is a type of job you're looking for. So you could type in video editing, copywriting, you get the point. Basically whatever type of job you're looking for, type the name of it in here. And now let's take a look at the important part which is filters. Select an experience level. When I first started out on Upwork, I mainly focused on entry level and intermediate jobs. However, I've been on Upwork for over four years now. I've positioned myself as a high quality freelancer. So now I only look at expert. The biggest difference between these is how much money you're gonna make. At my current rate of $125 an hour, I'm probably not gonna get hired at intermediate level or entry level. But again, when I first started on Upwork, I mainly focused on entry level and intermediate in the $25 an hour to about $35 an hour range. Those were my first three to four jobs on Upwork, all fell within those ranges. And obviously, if you have a lot of experience, you don't have to start out at those levels. When I started freelancing in 2016, I was 26 years old and had only been out of college for a few years. I needed to build my confidence and my skill set and my abilities as a freelancer. That's why I started out at lower levels. Next up, we have job type. If you want to be selective here, select one. If you leave it unchecked, you're going to see both of these. I primarily focus on hourly jobs, so I'm going to select hourly. Number of proposals. For this one, if you're a new freelancer, I would definitely recommend only these three. I also have an Upwork client account. I hired my video editor Alex on Upwork, and I've used it a lot. When there's more than 10 proposals submitted on a job, the client actually has to click a button to load the rest of them. The first 10 proposals show up on the first page. You'll probably hear different opinions on this. Some people will tell you that it doesn't matter how many have been submitted, but from my own personal experience, I know what I saw on my Upwork employer account. I didn't want to go through all those when it got over 20, so that's the main reason why I recommend this. I personally believe that when there's a lower amount of proposals submitted, your chances of being interviewed, being noticed, being hired, skyrocket. So this is what I would recommend selecting. Payment verified, I don't do anything with this one. Some clients will wait, especially for hourly contracts, until they find a freelancer before they verify their payment method. But be extremely careful. Never work on a job until the payment is verified. If a client tries to get you to work on something before their payment verified, there's a chance that you won't be paid. Do not do that. Make sure their payment verified, and if it's an hourly contract, then use the Upwork time tracker. But again, I leave these unchecked. Client history, I'll leave this unchecked as well. Some of my largest Upwork contracts have came from new clients to Upwork. I believe I have two contracts that are over $20,000 in earnings now, and I was the first freelancer that they ever worked with. I would recommend leaving these unchecked. You never know what type of big client is coming to Upwork and they're wanting to spend a lot of money. If you check this, you might be missing out on a big opportunity. Under budget, the first selections are related to fixed price contracts. So if you're looking for a fixed price contract in any of these ranges, go ahead and select it here. And if you're looking for hourly contracts, you can add a minimum rate and a max rate. So if I was looking for something, let's say in the $30 an hour to $60 an hour range, I would add that here. I usually don't select anything here, but if you're looking for a specific length of a project, this is where you would filter it. And then hours per week, if you're looking for a specific amount of hours per week, or let's say you can't add on more than 30 hours a week, it really needs to be less than 30, this is where you would also filter it. I'm looking at hourly contracts, expert experience level, and here's the proposal filters that we added. And I have a US only filter set as well. Now I have this enabled because the US only jobs usually pay more. With my hourly rate being $125 an hour, that's one of the main reasons why I use this. However, I've personally worked with Upwork clients all around the world. But this really comes down to what you're looking for. There's going to be way more jobs if you turn off the US only filter. Yep, 
245. And this number looks low, only 30 jobs found, but I put a lot of filters on here. I really got granular with what I'm looking for. And that's the point I'm getting at. Don't waste your connects. Make sure you find the best jobs that fit you and your skill set as well. And I'll give you one more thing here to keep in mind. Let me open up an older one. Let's say this job really sparked my interest and I want to submit a proposal on it. The title looks great. The hourly rate looks amazing. The job details look great. They're an Upwork Plus client. Payment verified. Okay, we're ready to get started. What most new freelancers would do right here is submit a job proposal. And this is where you could be wasting your connects. This job actually requires four connects. Let me show you why you would be wasting them. I'm not sure exactly why this job still shows up in search. I personally think it's because the freelancer hasn't billed any hours yet, so there's not any hours logged or any earnings on this contract yet, but they've already hired a freelancer. And you can verify that by scrolling down. And there it is. And what do you know? There's our job under client's recent history. You can also see that zero hours have been billed, and that's why I think it still shows up in search. There haven't been any earnings on this contract yet, so that's why it's still showing up, even though someone's been hired. Something you can do, which I've done in the past, let's say I submitted a job proposal and I feel great about the job, but they ended up hiring another freelancer. If I went to the original job posting, which is what we're looking at right now, I could scroll down, look at the recent history, and I could find the freelancer that they hired. Then I could go to that freelancer's profile and I could try to figure out why they chose them over me. Maybe it was because my rate was too high. Maybe it was because the freelancer had more experience. There could be a lot of different reasons, but that's one thing you can do. And also be sure to save your search. So how do you communicate with clients before the contract starts? This is definitely an area that's not documented or talked about enough. Upwork has strict requirements that you can find in the user agreement. Everything in the user agreement is extremely important because violating any of those requirements can result in your account being suspended or terminated. Okay, here's the direct contact information that you cannot share with Upwork clients before your contract starts. Basically, any form of communication outside of the Upwork platform is considered to be direct contact, and that violates the terms of service. Some examples of this are your phone number, email address, physical address, link to contact form or form requesting contact information, link to applicant management system or means to submit a proposal or application outside of Upwork, any handles, usernames, or information that would enable a user to contact you on social media or any other website platform. And it also includes communication tools like Skype, Slack, WeChat, Teams, and Zoom. Here's the key takeaway that I want you to remember. Before your contract starts, and that means before you're hired, before they send you that offer and you accept it, before then, all of your communication has to remain on Upwork. No matter what the client asks you for, even if it's your email address or just simply your phone number to do an interview, you can't give it out. Politely tell the client that you have to keep all of your contact with them on Upwork until the contract starts or it violates terms of service. If they choose not to interview you, there'll be more. You don't want to risk having your account suspended over one client. There's way more clients, trust me. All the pre-contract communication must remain on Upwork for all the interviews, introduction calls, or any discussions with clients before the contract starts. You have to use Upwork. Now I'll show you how to communicate with clients before your contract starts. This is actually my Upwork client account, but it will look the same way on the freelancer side as well for messaging. What you're looking at right now is the messages tab. This is the Upwork direct message that I have opened with my video editor, Alex. Using the Upwork messaging system is one of the accepted forms of communication before a contract starts. Before the contract starts, this would be an accepted way to communicate. So what about introduction and interview calls? Personally, I always do a quick 10 minute introduction or interview call with every single Upwork client before I decide to work with them. It gives me a chance to understand if I'll be a good fit for them, for their project, if my skill set matches what they need. The introduction call goes a long way for me in being successful on Upwork. So pre-contract, the way that you would do an introduction or interview call is you would use the Upwork calling feature, which is right here. And then you have a few options. They recently added in Zoom. They did a partnership with Zoom, and now you can actually schedule Zoom meetings with the client, which is amazing. 
So most clients that I do introduction or interview calls with, most of them use Zoom. I would say that the Upwork calling feature is pretty similar to Google Hangouts. You can do voice, video, you can pretty much do it all here with the Upwork call as well. It's definitely improved. I had a lot of issues with it initially. The audio was usually not that great and sometimes it wouldn't even detect my webcam, but it actually has come a long way and the last time I used it, it worked well. And the last option is a phone call. It'll basically give you a number that you and the client can call and join. So before a contract starts with a client, this is what you need to use to communicate with them. You can use the Upwork direct messaging, you can use Zoom to do a meeting, you can do Upwork calling, or you can do a phone call. These are the forms of communication that are accepted under terms of service. Again, don't violate them. You don't want to risk your account being suspended. Not with how Upwork and freelancing is going to grow in the future. You don't want to be missing out on this opportunity. Once you accept an offer, the contract starts and you're ready to start working. You can now communicate with clients using whatever works best for you and the client. Communication is immensely important to ensuring that your projects are successful and your clients actually know what you're working on. I don't want one of my clients sitting around wondering, is Josh working on my project today? If you start a new Upwork contract with a client, but you don't communicate with them, they're likely gonna be wondering what's going on. When a client gives you feedback and a rating when your contract ends, communication is one of the things that you're gonna be scored on. Remember that when you're working on contracts. After the contract starts, you can exchange other forms of contact information, such as emails and phone numbers. You can also use communication tools like Slack, Teams, and Skype. I have a lot of clients who use Slack and they added me to their workspace. After your contract starts, you can simply use whatever form of communication works best for you and the client. Effective communication has been one of the most important factors of my success on Upwork. I make sure that all my clients are always up to date on my work and never left wondering what I'm working on. As a freelancer, you probably want to be paid, right? When you get paid depends on your contract type. All right, now let's talk about something that you probably care about a lot, which is getting paid. So when your earnings become available depends on the type of payment. Let's first look at my favorite one, which is hourly contracts. It's based on a weekly billing cycle. The weekly billing period ends on Sunday and your funds are available for withdrawal 10 days later, which is the following Wednesday. If you're a top rated freelancer, you can also get paid faster now due to COVID-19. It was one of the main requests from freelancers to get paid quicker and Upwork does a great job of listening to freelancer requests. I can tell you this personally, I've been a freelancer on Upwork since 2016. They've made some great improvements to the platform, which came from the request from freelancers. Upwork does a phenomenal job of listening to the freelance community and I'd love to see that. But if you're a new freelancer, let's say you made $500 this week. When Sunday rolls around, that $500 is going to go into the 10 day waiting period. And the following Wednesday, you're going to get paid at 12 a.m. UTC. This payment system works great for me. Once you start getting a lot of hourly work, every week at 12 a.m. UTC, you're going to get paid for the previous week's work. And then for fixed price contracts that are based on milestones, once the client approves your milestone, so that's after you submit your work for approval and the client approves it, then your funds are available for withdrawal after a five day security period passes. And last, the client also has an option to give you bonus payments. This is any type of incentive or bonus they wanna give you on top of the work they're already paying you for. These are available after your client's payment has been successfully processed and the five day security period passes. There's also different payment methods that you can use, some of which involve transfer fees. And obviously before you can get paid, you need to set up a payment method. And if you're a US person, in addition to setting up your payment method, you also need to set your tax status. I'm not gonna say too much about taxes here cause that could be a fully dedicated video. There is one exception for tax forms. If you're a US person and you receive over $20,000 with more than 200 transactions through Upwork, then you'll receive a form 1099K. If you don't meet those requirements, then you're gonna have to get all your tax information together manually. Again, I'm not gonna dive too deep into taxes. I'll consider this for a future video if it's something that you guys wanna see. But again, there's so much information there, it could be a fully dedicated video. Now, after you're ready to set up a payment method, here's the options. And as you can see, some of these payment methods come with fees. The one that I personally use, and most other people do in the US as well, is direct deposit via ACH. 
This payment method involves zero fees. You can do direct to local bank at 99 cents per transfer. And there's other options that come with fees. Direct to local bank, wire transfer, instant pay, all of these have different fees. If you're outside of the US and none of these apply to you, then you have the following options, including PayPal. It's extremely simple to set up a payment method. Go to settings, get paid, add method, click the setup button, choose a payment schedule, that's it, you're done. Now let's discuss the fees involved with using Upwork. And before we get started, I wanna say that I believe the fees are fully worth it. Upwork brings freelancers like yourself and clients together all around the world. I personally do not like searching for jobs. It takes me away from the one thing that generates money, which is working. After you build a strong reputation for yourself on Upwork with a lot of five-star reviews, the jobs will start coming to you. I rarely have to search for jobs on Upwork. I get consistent job invites and I have long-term contracts as well. Now regarding fees, Upwork charges a service fee to freelancers, which is taken as a percentage of your earnings on Upwork. It's a sliding fee that's based on your lifetime billings with each client. Upwork fees include 20% for the first $500 that you earn with the client, then it drops down to 10% after you pass $500 earned with the client, and then after you pass $10,000, it drops down to just 5%. I know thinking about making $10,000 with a single client seems impossible or seems crazy when you're first starting out. I definitely felt the same way. But now I have so many contracts that are well over $10,000 and I'm just paying 5% in fees. And here's an example for you. Let's say you win a fixed price job of $1,000. You'll be billed at 20% for the first $500 and then 10% for the remaining 500. The fees are definitely worth it for what you get out of the platform. And once they drop down to 10% and 5%, you're not losing much. You can definitely increase your hourly rate a little bit to offset fees. Upwork also has a Freelancer Plus membership subscription, which comes with benefits. The membership plan is $14.99 per month, and it's designed to help you more effectively market your services, submit proposals, and stand out. Here's the main benefits. Be discoverable by keeping your profile active even when taking a break. So if you're taking a break and you're not actively working on any jobs at the moment, your profile can still be discovered by clients and you can get job invites. Be competitive with insight into competitor bid range on jobs. So this you can actually see what other freelancers are bidding. You can see the bid range from high to low of what other freelancers are bidding on jobs that you're bidding on, which can help a lot in determining where to price yourself. Engage and apply. You get 80 connects per month, 70 included with your plan purchase, and 10 free connects from Upwork. And you can also create a customized profile URL. This is something I haven't done yet, but I probably will. I'll probably create one that has Josh Burns Tech in the name of it. It's definitely something that I need to get around to doing, especially since I'm paying for this membership. And you can also keep your earnings confidential. I don't do that for mine because I don't care. You know, I want clients to be able to see how much I'm earning, especially if I have a really big project, it can give them more confidence in me as a freelancer. But if you're a freelancer plus, you can also hide your earnings. Now let's talk about, in my opinion, the most important part of this entire video, which is client reviews. Your success on Upwork is gonna be closely tied to your reputation. What clients say about you is either gonna make or break you as a freelancer. When a client views your profile, you want them to see tons of five-star reviews and great feedback, which builds their confidence in you. If they view your profile and they see tons of bad reviews, why should they wanna work with you? I don't go to Amazon and buy products that have tons of bad reviews, just like Upwork clients won't hire freelancers with bad reviews. My reputation on Upwork is what brings in consistent job invites. There's tons of clients on Upwork who are looking for the best talent and they have more than enough money to pay for it. What if you get an unfair review from honestly, just a bad client? Well, hopefully first off, you're doing introduction calls using Upwork communication. So hopefully you can filter out clients that don't really fit with you. If for some reason you do receive an unfair review, you have some options. First, if you have top rated status or higher, then you can occasionally request to remove client feedback. And there's different types of approval as well. You can remove only from your job success score, the public score and the comment will still be visible on your profile, or you can remove from your job success score and from your profile. This means that your public score will be hidden and the comment will be replaced by, this feedback has been removed. 
These are great options if, for instance, you just run into a bad client or you just may be running into someone that's had a rough week trying to get a problem fixed and you may, you may take the hit there. Hopefully this never happens to you. So you have to be top rated and also requests can only be made every three months and after 10 or more completed contracts from the time of your previous submitted request. So it's only something that you can request every three months or so if needed. This is why I always stress introduction and interview calls. Do your best to filter out any clients that you think you're just not going to fit well with. When you do your introduction and interview calls, really listen to the client, figure out if you're going to be a good fit, pick up on any social cues that may seem like you're not going to be a good fit to work with them, maybe there's a personality thing from the client. Do your best to vet the client to make sure you're not going to run into an issue where you need to request to have feedback removed. I've personally worked with over 100 clients on Upwork and I have numerous 5 star reviews and great feedback. The introduction and interview calls that I do are a huge component of my success on Upwork. If I didn't do those calls, I would often get myself into situations where I could be needing to request to have feedback removed from my profile. So they're very important. Definitely schedule interview and introduction calls with new clients. Set yourself up for success and that's where you start. So what if you're not top rated and you're fairly new to Upwork? Well then if you fully refund the entire project, then it won't appear on your profile. However, it does still affect your job success score. So let's say I have a $500 fixed price contract. Something went horribly wrong. And when closing the contract, the client left me a bad review. If I then fully refund the $500 back to the client, the review will be gone. But again, my job success score will still be affected. There's nothing you can do about that besides dispute the review with the client and hopefully they'll give you a better review. You have the option to allow the client to edit feedback and that's in your contract settings. When your profile is flooded with five-star reviews and great feedback, more and more clients will want to work with you. Building client confidence not only leads to more jobs, but it can also lead to long-term work, which can be very lucrative. So what if you do an amazing job and you really know that deep down, you just did amazing on this job, but the client left it open and they didn't give you feedback. Send them a message and let them know that you would like to close the contract so you can have a review. And then if they have more work in the future that you can help with, they can simply create a new job and invite you to it. Over deliver and give without expectation. Once you focus on giving more than you receive, the jobs and the money will come pouring in. My client reviews and feedback are way more important than any money that I make. If my content helps you and you get value from it, be sure to follow my Instagram and Twitter. I post freelancing tips and show you my work ethic and grind every day. Like most things in life, the more time that you put into Upwork and freelancing, the more you will get out of it. Everyone can learn Upwork best practices. I mean, I have a full freelance playlist on my channel that freelancers from all around the world can watch for free. What separates you is your work ethic and your soft skills. Be someone who people want to work with. You may be the most talented person in whatever your skill is, but if you're always negative and you're difficult to work with, you're always gonna struggle as a freelancer. Be overly positive and be someone who people, they genuinely just wanna work with. It's so important to start now and stop convincing yourself you know what, I'm just gonna wait until tomorrow. Today, it isn't a good day for me. I can always wait until tomorrow. What's the big deal? That mindset will lead to immense procrastination where eventually you're gonna talk yourself out of even starting. Don't let fear of failure paralyze you. Take control of it. Everyone fails. I've failed numerous times. I feel like I don't even deserve all the five-star reviews on my profile. Everyone fails, you're gonna get better. If you haven't hit the like button yet and subscribe to the channel, definitely do that now. I have a lot of really great freelancing content planned for this year that I'm excited to share with you and help you grow. If you're focusing on building long-term wealth like I am, or you essentially want free money, then use my links in the description of this video to get free stocks in both Robinhood and Weeble. And again, if you want to learn directly from me, then check out my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Josh Burns Tech. Start today, put in the work, put in the grind, be consistent on a daily basis, and let's get to work. On this end screen, I recommend checking out these videos, and be sure to hit that round subscribe button for weekly tech videos, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you for watching, and until next time.